Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Valentine's Day, Wednesday, the 14th of February, 2018. Let's begin with a look at the Southern Oscillation Index. Minus 22 today. The overall background state, these averages here, getting closer to zero, and that means we are getting closer to neutral conditions in the equatorial Pacific. And we can see that to some extent here, this moderation of the cold area in the eastern two-thirds of the tropical Pacific, but we do have this large area of subsurface warmth looming in the wings, waiting to move perhaps from west to east over here and erode this further. Now, I want to kind of point something out. The last version of this, which was a few weeks ago, is right here, right now. These usually progress from west to east, and the last one did just that, and it ended up being basically eroded away in all of this cold area. So kind of like if you have a large block of ice, and then you take a bottle of water and fill it with hot water, uh, or a bottle and fill it with hot water, a bottle of water and fill it with hot water, whatever, and you try to dribble it on the block of ice, well, if you have unlimited hot water, you'll eventually get rid of the ice, correct? But it's going to take a while with just a little bit of hot water at a time, and I think that's what we saw here with this last area of large subsurface warmth that moved across and it got absorbed over here in this island of cold and it just takes a few weeks for things to change. So even though the SOI is getting closer to that neutral, the Pacific will take longer to respond. There's kind of a lag there, but it's something we can keep an eye on. A little bit of talk of El Nino coming up, maybe. It's still February. We remember what happened last year when that talk came up, so we'll see. It's still you know, months and months to go. Interesting, too, that I saw some discussion from Dr. Phil Klotzbach that the North Atlantic has cooled anomalously uh, from December through February. And it certainly has. It was much warmer overall. However, the weekly average here from the National Hurricane Center site, the Reynolds analysis here, as it's called, uh, and it's a weekly average. I mean, you can clearly see that the northern latitudes here of the North Atlantic uh, are quite a bit warmer than average. You know, down here in the deep tropics, it's been chiseled away just a little bit because of stronger trades and a very strong North Atlantic oscillation sitting out here, driving those trades across fairly briskly. But I see that that's probably going to change in the coming weeks with a, uh, more of a negative NAO or a weakening of the trades, and we'll probably see a warming up of the main development region. But the main thing is, yeah, the North Atlantic up here as a whole, clearly a lot warmer than it should be. It stands out there. Some of these you know, gradients here, these uh, what we call isotherms or lines of equal temperature, I mean, look, you know, there's a half a degree, there's one degree, one and a half, and then two degrees Celsius. That's, you know, that's getting it. That's several degrees Fahrenheit above the long-term average. So just, we'll see. Kind of interesting. In the Gulf of Mexico, there's that one area of 26 Celsius that never really went away for the winter time, and now we're seeing you know, there's a record high in Naples the other day, very warm down in South Florida. I follow John Morales on Twitter and uh, Eric Blake down at the Hurricane Center talking a lot about the warmth in Florida again. Kind of reminds me of last year. It's similar, not the same, obviously. Unless you live in San Diego, the weather is not the same every year, but there can be some similarities, and I'm seeing that starting to come back once again for this year, in that very warm southwest uh, part, well, that's the central gulf, but it's affecting the southwest part of Florida a little bit with this ridge over here. And just interesting to note, you know, once we get past the first few days of March, hey, we're less than 90 days away from hurricane season, and then these things are really going to start to matter. When you look at it from that perspective, less than 90 days to go until June 1st, and then anything could happen. You never know. In the western Atlantic and the northwest Atlantic, no real surprises here. If we go back and look at the anomaly map, a little colder right off in the shelf water areas than it should be, but a large area, well, not very large aerially, you know, for the uh, amount of real estate it covers, but some of those gradients in there, it's getting close to 3 degrees Celsius right off the coast of Nova Scotia. Again, part of the overall warmth of the north Atlantic, you know, the northern latitudes of the north Atlantic, but no big surprises, really. 
Um, in the southwest Pacific, in the southern hemisphere, uh, tropical cyclone Gita, hopefully that's how you say it, very large eye as it starts to unravel and gradually wind down from its intensity where it went over Tonga, uh, probably close to Category 5 intensity. And uh, you might have read about that in the news, seen it on social media. The track of it over the next several days will take it close to uh, and eventually towards um, New Zealand, if I can get my pointer back. Remember, the recurvature in the southern hemisphere is opposite of what we see in the northern hemisphere. So as this curves south, it'll be heading closer towards the pole down here, the South Pole, as we see, and we call that a poleward turn in the storm or the hurricane or whatever. We have that in the Northern Hemisphere, but our tracks look a lot like that when they recurve. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the opposite. So really not a big deal from here on out. Maybe some swells propagating out all along this region, eventually towards Australia, and of course down here towards New Zealand. But uh, just an interesting product of the overall change in what's happening in the Pacific as well. The strong dip in the Southern Oscillation Index, the strong MJO pulse out this way sort of led to this, and we see that oftentimes in the Atlantic Basin during our hurricane season. Moving on to lower 48 weather, I love this graphic, and uh, it really shows this is a graphic from, uh, where is this coming from, the source? So this is weathermodels.com tweeted by Ed Piotrowski in South Carolina, and um, I love it because it doesn't show any intrusion of Arctic air in my neck of the woods over the next couple of weeks or so, well, 10 days. So all this blue and purple stays locked away, strong southern uh, southeast Atlantic ridge or southwest Atlantic ridge protecting the southeast United States. Too many ways to describe this, but the bottom line, we're keeping those purples and blues away from my neck of the woods, and that's just fine with me. I'm ready for spring. Um, and that will also keep the big storms away. There will be a few, you know, like this weekend, there's some snow for the interior northeast probably coming up, but no major outbreaks of Arctic air in the deep south typically means no major storms because the energy and the temperature contrast isn't there. So we'll hopefully, you know, hopefully this will hold. I want to also mention coming up, the National Tropical Weather Conference down in South Padre Island, April 3rd through the 7th. It actually goes through the weekend in terms of the meet and greet opportunities on Saturday. The conference itself is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But then on Saturday, we all break out and go on these excursions. And it's a lot of fun because you get to you know mingle with the people. And I think that's so important. It's probably nice to have a conference where there's three or 4,000 attendees but you never get a chance to really meet the people that are the speakers. And this one's a lot more intimate and just more of, uh, I don't know, there's just, it just seems like it's more personal. I'm on the panel to speak. I love being able to speak about what my projects have yielded. But I gotta be honest, I love more the fact that I get to interact with people like Dr. Neil Frank. You know, I get to see Josh Warman, you know, him from well, he was on that Discovery Channel show, Storm Chasers, with Reed Timmer for a time. Uh, Tim Marshall, there's a lot of other people coming. Josh Morgerman will be there. Uh, different people with PhDs, so they're a lot smarter than me. Folks from the National Hurricane Center, past and present. Jim Eds, I mean, come on, you can't beat this lineup. And it's in beautiful South Padre. You learn a lot, but I'm telling you, for the intimacy of getting to know the people, that are the speakers at the meet and greets, during the breaks, etc. You're not lost in like a large city, a Las Vegas and Orlando or whatever. You're in South Padre, and so everything is just right there. There's just something about it. So I highly encourage, if you have any interest in hurricanes, whether you're in the broadcast field, and that's who it's mainly tailored for, but first responders, planners, you name it, or just people that run social media for companies, you know, and you need to know about who to follow for hurricanes and what's going on in that world of the hurricane blogosphere, as I call it, this is the conference for you. It's called the National Tropical Weather Conference, South Padre Island, HurricaneCenterLive.com. You see it up there in the URL. Check it out and register, book your hotel room, and we will see you there. I'll talk about it more in the coming days and weeks. 
and uh, a little bit of a hint on what I'll be talking about in my presentation as well. All right? I just want to make sure I mention that because it is important. And they've kept that thing going even in years where there was not much hurricane activity at all. Uh, and the organizers of it, Alex and Tim and, and the people the behind the scenes, uh, really doing a good job with that, and I appreciate it. Uh, because it mattered. Last year, it really did. We saw where it all hit home. All right? So that's it for me for today. Thanks for enduring another session of the off-season hurricane outlook and discussion with yours truly. I am Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com. I do appreciate you tuning in. And let's do it again next week early, eh, Monday or Tuesday, shall we? I'll talk to you then.